morning star. And the people of God said, Amen. Better is still coming to America, but really better is still coming to you. And we give the Lord's name the praise. Like so many uh, romantic comedies, uh, Coming to America, part one, uh, deals with a, a couple who, uh, as the stylistic song said, uh, were getting ready uh, to break up to make up. And if you think of most of the romantic comedies, whether it be Love and Basketball, whether it be uh, Baggage Claim that our dear friend Dave Talbot uh, produced and directed, or whether it be Drumline, the story is kind of the same. Uh, a couple meets, they then look like they're gonna break up, and then the movie ends with them coming back together, and they live happily ever after. And we see that in uh, Coming to America, part one. Uh, Prince Sakim uh, has an arranged marriage by his family. Uh, he wants to marry someone that is not just marrying him because of who he is uh, and the title he has and the money he has, but he wants someone to marry him because of the fact that he wants true love. And so he goes to America, uh, finds the woman that he thinks will fulfill that dream. Uh, she is arranged marriage to someone else, and so they're friends, and then um, they find out that he's really a prince, and then from that, her father gets excited and wants her to marry Prince Akeem, but, um, but she's upset that Prince Akeem has deceived her and not told her really who he who is as a prince. And so as the movie comes to a conclusion, uh, Prince Akeem is at the altar, and you're assuming he's getting ready to marry back in Africa the woman that had been set aside for him in an arranged marriage. But as the veil is pulled up over the bride's face, you see it's really Lisa McDowell, the woman of his dreams, and the movie ends happily ever after. Wouldn't it be wonderful if life had that same happy ever after uh, ending to it as well. But the reality is that things are not quite that simple. And in Coming to America Part 2, we begin to see life's challenges coming our way. And in uh, Coming to America Part 2, we see that Prince Akeem has now become King Akeem. Uh, and it's a case by which he now finds out at the 30th anniversary of his marriage that he has fathered a child when he was in America. And so he goes back to America to find the child. And it's a case by which initially you think that it's going to be a challenge because in his mind and in the family's mind, the child is a mistake. But as the movie comes along and goes along, you begin to see that they realize that Prince, and his name is Lavelle, and just as an aside, his real name is Jermaine Fowler from Prince George's County, graduate of Northwestern High School in Hyattsville. But his son, uh, as the movie goes on, is not a mistake. It's not an accident. Someone who's watching today, you need to be very clear that God does not make any mistakes. The circumstances of your birth has nothing to do with how God views you. Just as Pastor Joe and I are wearing royal garments on today, you need to be very clear that you are a royal somebody. You're a holy somebody. You have been taken out of darkness and brought into the marvelous light because God wants you to know he loves you just as much as he loves any. Matter of fact, he loves you and you have much kingliness about you as the so-called royal family in England. You are somebody unto God. And so with that, you need to walk like it. You need to talk like it. You need to live like it. Regardless of your circumstance, you are somebody. And so uh, our King Akeem uh, comes to America, finds his son, brings him back to uh, Africa, and much like himself, he winds up uh, trying to have his son also become a part of an arranged marriage so there'll be peace amongst rival nations. And just like he, uh, his son refuses or does not want to marry the woman that has been arranged for him. 
and King Akeem is upset until his wife reminds him that your son is like you. He wanted to marry for true love. And so um, the son, trying to exert whatever authority he may have, went to America uh, to marry the woman of his dreams. And with that uh, understanding of what it's taking place, King Akeem takes authority over the situation. He realizes that I'm the king, and I do not have to be bound by the tradition of having an arranged marriage, just like I broke tradition. My son is now breaking tradition, and I have the authority either to accept what he is doing or to crush what he's doing. And I'm taking my authority to let my son know that what he's doing is okay. So he goes to America, finds his son and the woman that he wants to marry. They come back to Africa. And from that, the story has many different storylines. It's not only the son having the opportunity to marry the woman of his dreams, but also the daughter who really was in place all along to become the head of the nation. King Akeem breaks tradition and says, my son, who does not want to be king, I am now going to allow my daughter to become queen when I die. He took authority over the situation, broke tradition, smashed all the things that persons thought ought to take place. And from that, because he took authority over the situation, the movie ends happily ever after. During this Lenten season, in order for better to still come, not to America, but to you, you've got to take authority over the situations that are keeping you from being all that God would have you to be. The Lenten season is about exercising spiritual authority against those things that may be coming against you from preventing you from being the royal somebody God wants you to be. And spiritual authority is just like anything else. You've got to exercise it. Uh, oh, 1989, I, I broke my ankle and was in a cast for about eight weeks. And while in the cast, uh, obviously I could not move my foot or ankle in any way. So when I got out of the cast, the doctors called it atrophy. The muscle had lost all of its strength. So I had to go back to rehabilitation. And in the rehabilitation, it, it allowed me to get the strength back in my muscle, in my ankle, because I had not exercised it. Anytime you don't exercise a muscle in your body, it gets atrophy. It, it no longer has the strength it used to have. If you do not exercise spiritual authority in your life, exercise it. It does not have the same strength it ought to have in your life. And so many times persons just allow their own feelings, their own natural inclinations to say, I, I, I'm just going to do this because I, don't, I, I, I can't control it. it. It can be something as simple as eating. You haven't taken authority over the fact that I'm going to eat well. I'm going to make sure that my diet is one by which I'm going to be healthy. Instead, you eat everything, anything you want to eat, anytime you want to eat it, and the consequences is you have poor health because you've not taken authority. It's a case by which in many times in your own personal lives, you've just done what you wanted to do. You allowed your feeling and emotions to go anywhere, do with what you want to do with anybody. As we shared last week, Isley Brothers song, it's my thing. I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care who I sock it to. You just, you just do what you want to do and you've never taken authority over the fact I'm not going there. I'm not seeing her. I'm not seeing him. I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to have my life built on the power of God. It's, it's a case by which it's not just going to happen. Your natural inclinations will always overrule your spiritual inclinations. So you have to take spiritual authority over it and say, this time I am going to hold on. To what God says. It, it's a case by which as we look at the church in Thyatira, it's it, it's a case by which 
it, it gives them all kinds of initially wonderful accolades. I, I, John is telling the church, I see how you love. I see your faith. I see your endurance, I see your hard work, and I see that you're better now than you were before. God sees you as he has created you. God sees you as a royal somebody. God, God sees you as a holy somebody. God, God sees you as created by the Almighty. So, so you need to be very clear, you are loved by God. God, God embraces you. God, God God wants you to know I'm proud of you. I don't care who you are or what you've done. God, God still loves you and he sees the good in you. But then he goes on to say, but I have something against you. There's this woman in the church by the name of Jezebel. She's a prophetess. So John is saying, I'm not talking about like a, a, a Diana, a, a God outside the church. I'm talking about someone inside of the church as a prophetess who has a following. And, and, and theologians are not quite clear if it's a specific woman in the church or whether she's symbolically representing Jezebel in Kings, in which Jezebel was the wife of King Ahab. Jezebel was one who worshipped the god of Baal. And she convinced her husband and led her husband, King Ahab, astray, and he worshipped Baal. But worse, she then led the people of Israel astray, and they were worshipping Baal. And it got to the point that if something did not happen, Israel would have lost its relationship with God. So God raised up a prophet by the name of Elijah. And Elijah took authority over that situation on Mount Carmel and said, Jezebel and the prophets of Baal will not control Israel. And as he took authority over that situation, the people of Israel began to come back to God and, and went against Baal. In, in many ways, the situation in the church of, of Thyatira is the same way. G God is saying, you cannot let this woman control how it is that you operate in the church. And just to teach a little while, because it is important to realize what was going on. In Tyatra during this time, they had what were called trade guilds. And if you were in wool or in linen or if you were in silversmith, whatever trades you had, you had almost to be a part of these trade guilds in order to get business. It'd be much like all the trillions of dollars that is now going into the American economy from the stimulus package. You, you have to be a part of some kind of trade union in order to uh, trade guild to order to uh, get some of the monies that would become available. So, so in order to do this, you had to be, but the problem was these trade guilds had their meetings in idol god temples. And, and in those temples, they would have drunken orgies. And so in order to get business within the city, you had to become part of these drunken orgies. But not only that, in these meetings, meat was offered to the idol god. So the meat would be just as we have communion, as we give it unto Jesus. They would take meat and say, this meat is now dedicated to the god Diana. This meat is dedicated to the god Zeus. And so as it was dedicated to this god, then they would eat it in the name of the god. And in order to be a part of these gills, you had to eat the meat as well. But not only that, sometimes that meat was then sold to butchers. And these were the best meat. So as a Christian, you had to participate in these gills in order to get business, as well as you had to eat meat offered to idols. And so it was a dilemma. Because if you did not participate, your, your economic uh, future was put in jeopardy. But Jezebel, it wasn't a case by which she was preaching, I understand your challenge. I know it's hard for you to, to be able to navigate being a Christian and being a part of these guilds and uh, eating meat offered to idols. It wasn't, no, she encouraged it. 
She said it's all right to go to these meetings. It's, it's all right to commit these sexual sins. It's, 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 it's all right to, to, to do what it is you want to do. God understands everything is okay. And, 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 and on top of that, you're making a lot of money and you're giving the money to the church and we're able to do all kinds of things. So, so God understands. And so Jesus is saying, I don't approve this. He's saying, I have eyes like fire. My eyes penetrate what it is you're doing. You can't, you can't hide it from me. And it's a case, I know your heart. I know the very seat of your emotions. And I know what you're doing comes from the very depths of Satan. And so unless you deal with this woman, just as the church is the bride of Christ, you are my bride. And you are now committing sexual infidelity, but also spiritual infidelity. And just as uh, Elijah could not let Israel become a part of Baal, I cannot allow the teaching of Jezebel to continue. So it's not that he's going to physically kill her children. He's saying, I'm going to have to end what's taking place. Because if I don't, the church of the living God will go astray and it will just become another religion within the Roman Empire that says Caesar is Lord. So I'm going to have to intervene. I'm going to take authority. And, and those who follow Jezebel, you're going to sleep in the bed uh, that you're making. In other words, I'm going to come and I'm going to come with a force and a fire and a power to tear up what's taking place so that the church of the living God will be able to last until 2021. So when the Ebenezer African Methodist Episcopal Church comes preaching on March 14, 2021, there will be a church to preach in because some of you will take authority over this Jezebel and get this out of the church so that the bride of Christ can live. Ah, Prince Akeem, King Akeem took authority he, he said yes I'm gonna have my kingdom become what it is it ought to be the tradition of just male authority is now ended my daughter is now going to be an authority because that's what's best for the country I'm taking authority my son does not want to be pretty he does not want so he's going to be an ambassador to don't force him to be what it is he does not want to be talk to me harry and megan they came against the strongest royal empire in this nation and be very very clear the crown of england is the foundation of white supremacy the crown of england is the foundation of white superiority the crown of england is where it all started the crown of england is the home undergirding of what it is we're fighting against in these united states and prince harry and megan said we're coming against it our lives shall not be what it is you want it to be we're taking authority we're coming out of this we're coming out of this for our marriage we're coming out of this for our children and if you don't like it so be it but my family and my children and our legacy for us is greater than the traditions that you have in place somebody this morning you need to take authority yes it's hard yes it's difficult yes you'll be criticized yes you'll be put down but jesus said if you do it i want you to know i'll give you authority not just over a gill i'll give you authority not just over a temple but i'll give you authority over nations i will allow you to smash everything that comes against you every weapon against you every tongue against you every demonic force against you i will give you the power to be victorious but not only victorious i want you to know i'll also give you the bright and morning star those who are watching today you know daylight saving time just started and so as we woke up this morning it was still nighttime outside because the fact we are now an hour later an hour earlier and so as you woke up it was dark outside but as it started to get light Jesus is saying I am the one that's bringing light to darkness 
It's much like the North Star when our slave mother and fathers had to go from slavery to freedom. They had to follow a bright star. It was the North Star, and that North Star allowed them, if they navigated with it, to move from the south to the north because it was their guide. But more than the guide, that North Star was their hope. Somebody here this morning, when it's dark outside, you need the bright and morning star because it gives you a hope that everything is going to be all right. I don't know about you, but in the midst of this pandemic, I need the bright and morning star to let me know that everything is going to be all right. I don't know about you, but when your body gets sick, you need the bright and morning star to let somebody know he is a healer. When situations are going awry in your family, you need to know that he is the bright and morning star. And what Satan is trying to tear down, God is going to build up when your money gets funny you need to know that he's the bright and morning star that he still owns a cattle on a thousand hills when you have tears in your eyes when death knocks on your door when you're grieving when you're sad when you're down when you're lonely when you're hurt you need to know he's the bright and morning star because hope is on the way so i come by on this sunday to let somebody know better is still coming not to america but better is still coming to you hold on a little while longer why because the one who is the bright and morning star they hung him high stretched him wide put his body in a tomb and there he died but early is the Sunday morning the bright and morning star got up with all power in his hands hold on live on fight on take the authority take the power take the anointing take the love that God has given you and when you do eyes have not seen ears have not heard and you can't comprehend what God is getting ready to do better is still coming to you glory hallelujah glory hallelujah glory hallelujah somebody can feel their chains coming better is still coming I'm believing by faith it's coming to America but God says in order for it to come to this country it's gonna have to do justly it's gonna have to love mercy it's gonna have to walk humbly with our God a year after Brianna, Brianna Taylor's death still nobody rested yes I thank God that George Floyd's family got a settlement but almost a year later they're still fooling around with whether or not they're gonna die in police I don't know if you've been watching the news but in the last since this month of March has started there have been about at least five or six police shootings of African Americans a year later America still is not doing justly, still is not loving mercy, still not walking humbly with his God. So I ain't talking to America, I'm talking to you. Better is still coming for you today, but you are gonna have to take authority to make sure it happens. It's not just gonna happen, your natural inclinations will have you walk from God, but if you take authority, you walk to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, how can you do that? You got to have Jesus. <laughs> he is the author and the finisher of your faith. He is the one who reminds you how royal you are, how anointed you are, how blessed you are. I know someone saying, Pastor, <laughs> how can you say that about me? You, you don't see where I am right now. You don't see what I'm thinking right now. You don't, you don't understand my circumstance, but God does. And wherever you are, 
whatever you have done, whatever you are doing, wherever you have been, wherever you are planning to go, God wants you to know your destiny is still intact.